This week on the Town Tailgate Podcast, we have a very special guest for you. Um, another legend from the greatest city on the planet, Antioch, California. Tyler McAvena joins us. And Julio, fun fact, that is also a girl's name apparently because that is a girl. That is not a guy. Yay, yay. Tyler Mack, Rebbe the 925. She'll be joining us this week. We're going to be discussing the news around the leagues, which include the updated playoff picture throughout Major League Baseball, as well as the passing of two of baseball's biggest legends with Tom Seaver and Lou Brock. From there, we're going to be talking about our Oakland A's, Chris. Yeah, the a little disappointing series with the Padres, but some light at the end of the tunnel with a very satisfactory series against the Astros. And then a couple of the injury woes going on with the A's, and of course the return of... The master himself, Marcus Simeon. <laughs> then we go over last week's Essential Tailgate Tools of the Week. We pick a player of the week. And then big segment coming up after the break. Isn't that right, Julio? That's right. It is time for us, for the Oakland A's, to focus. Just take Zen. a deep breath. Zen. We have our last month of the season before we hit the playoffs. The, now it's time for the Oakland A's to really focus on what's going to make them the best team in baseball. From then on out, we'll do our usual stuff, talk about the coming week, as well as our essential tailgate tools of the week. I like what you did there with focus. You know, very, very uh, foreshadowing. So stay tuned, folks. And here's Tyler Mack joining us. Welcome to the tailgate. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be diversity day today on the on the Town Tailgate podcast um, because today we have a very special guest. We have a girl joining us yeah. today. That's right. We that's right. Woo. Girls like sports too, everybody. Girls like sports too. So um, welcome everybody, Tyler McAvena to uh, the Town Tailgate podcast. What's up, Tyler? Hey, you got the last name right. That's I. Well, I've known you for known so you for long. Years. I better I get it right. Didn't yeah. Know. That's how you pronounce your full last name. <laughs> I love too that your first girl is named Tyler as well. That'll throw oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's gonna be confusing, Julio, when we post it on like social media. Like, <laughs> join us this week with Tyler McAvena, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, cool, another guy." Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You can, you can never assume these days. <laughs> you never know. Um. So thanks for coming on, Tyler. We're excited to have you. Um. Uh, we made it a point that we wanted you to be one of our first like five guests because we know how big of an A's fan you are. We went to uh, the wild card game this past wild, uh, disappointing wild card game. Um. Uh, night don't, together. Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> Did a nice I'm, little. I'm pretty game. much banned from playoff games now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I can't go. <laughs> uh, and you're coming to us from Sacramento, California. Yes. Yes. Um, Bay, there you go. So, should we just let's just start off with um, just talking a little bit about you? So, like, how did you become an Ace fan? Yeah. So, I was born and raised in Antioch. Uh, so, I think like a lot of us East Bay area homies. That's right. We, another uh, another another Antioch homie. <laughs> another Antioch. There's there's a lot of us. Um, you know, that's what I was born and raised with as far as baseball goes. I, I think A's was the closer, cheaper option. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but really, I guess as, as it goes with starting to be a fan, um, I played softball in middle school and high school. And weirdly, instead of starting to watch softball, I started to watch baseball um, because I love Nick Swisher. I thought he was so cute. <laughs> 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 and um and he played first base so uh um, yeah what, I, what position did you play i played first i'm a lefty oh, okay so i actually had his number i was number 33 oh, oh my you god you really you t- you took this crush to the max uh, for a second, I, I thought you had like his actual phone number i'm like wait i'm like you were probably like <laughs> oh my god that, that would have been illegal yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that would have been a problem Uh, No, so I I started watching them and really, like, that's how I learned the game of baseball and inherently softball as well. Um, You know, there's so many little things with baseball, you know, what to do in a pickle, where to throw it, Mm -hmm. you know, when you have men on first and third or women on first and third, kind of what you're doing there. Um, And when it came to the A's, I just feel like they're always kind of an underdog. I love a good underdog. Yeah. 
you know, they, they give us so much hope through every season. <laughs> we get so excited and more often than not, we're let down a little bit, but, um, more often you know. than not, how about uh, uh, every single time? Every I'm, single trying time. Them, I'm trying to give them a little credit here. I mean, it could be worse. <laughs> It could. <laughs> it could. I mean, yeah. It sucks. No, no, I love them. And then their colors are uh, are way better than the Giants' colors. So had to go that route. <laughs> Best colors. But isn't game, your baby. isn't your whole isn't your whole family like Ace fans though? Kind of. Yeah. So my dad, um, he's from the Midwest. He's a big Cardinals fan. Oh, okay. Um, but now he's been in California. I think longer than he was he was out there. So. He, he's a bit half and half. Whenever we've gone to uh, playoff games, he always wears his Cardinals jerseys underneath his A's jerseys because <laughs> usually the Cardinals are in the playoffs too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so just for the listeners, so me and me and Tyler went to high school together. I mean, Julio kind of, but Julio's a little bit older than Tyler. Tyler's a couple years younger than me, so yeah, uh, I think, we became close in high school. I think I was that. a senior because what year did you graduate? Yeah, I was wondering that too. I graduated in 2010. Yeah, so I was a senior when, okay. and like, yeah, was... the only freshman that I knew <laughs> was Robert Lothringer because he lived across the street. Shout out, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was definitely not cool enough to be known by seniors <laughs> when I was a freshman. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> uh, so how did you come to enjoy the team so much? Um, currently or just historically? I don't Ever. know. I I would say just like like what like what makes you such a big fan? Like what makes you go to like s- several I games every A's season? Games. Yeah. Makes, yeah, I I think the A's for me are more of like a feeling than a team. I mean, just going to the Coliseum itself, um, you know, it gets a lot of shit talked on it. But I love being there. The tailgates are, you know, they can't be beat. Um, you know, it's so old. It's like gets gets flooded every year. Um, but it's a beautiful, beautiful field to me. I love seeing the team play. I love that we typically have a young team, um, that's really trying to build it up. And, um, I kind of like that we're not a team like the Yankees or the Cardinals that massive you know, yeah, eye roll. Like, that was a <laughs> massive eye roll when, <laughs> when, when the word Yankees obvious? came out of her mouth. <laughs> um, but that that you really don't know kind of what to expect from them. Um, you know, I just, I just love that about the A's love watching the team. I mean, we've had so many really iconic groups of players, you know, the Coco era, um, the Nick Swisher, Eric Chavez era, um, you know, and now we have Chapman Olsen, all those guys too. I think we have really memorable teams to people even outside of the A's fan base which is pretty cool to be a part of. You brought up a really good point of just the Coliseum itself about the special feelings. I'm sure between the three of us, we've probably been to at least a dozen stadiums around the country. There's not many that really, uh, it could be us biased, but just seeing from what other people have said around the country too, there's not many that provide like that kind of feeling like you get in Oakland. It's mm-hmm. like maybe like a handful and that's it. Even when there's a total culture thing too. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole city that uh, I, well, <laughs> maybe not in, in recent years, but you know, the culture of Oakland, just people in the Bay area, people, even just going to giants games, it's a totally different vibe. You feel that people are really there for the game and to be around other fans. I love how like emotional the responses I've gotten from our two guests. It's been great. I love yeah, the explanations. Like, Mason, Mason like got it's like, a little right emotional too, and I love it's it. Made, it. It, made me, it made me feel like I'm sitting in left field right now. Did, didn't yeah. they say baseball's romantic? Is yeah, how can you not football? be romantic about Base- baseball? <laughs> yes, there mm-hmm. we go. That's it. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite A's moment? Uh, so I, I thought about this one a little bit. Uh, my favorite moment is more of a memory, and it really isn't isn't a game, actually. I don't know if you guys ever did this, but did you ever run the bases uh, at O.co? Mm-hmm. Or I guess ring, whatever it's called now. Yeah, so I, I think by the time it came <laughs> around, um, I might have been, like, too old. But I was I was <laughs> a part of, like, the Ace Kids Club where we'd always get, like, the stomper bobblehead and then like the stomper oh, yeah. so that was my Same. thing they they love their kids there but 
Um, one of my memories is my uncle, my dad's brother was out here. He's obsessed with sports. He didn't understand why my dad didn't work as a popcorn guy at, uh, <laughs> at O.co, <laughs> um, being so close to it. Um, but he was out here and my sister and I were a little bit younger, but definitely um, old enough. You know, I think I'm 12 or 13. My sister's eight or nine. And we're going to go run the bases. And my dad's trying to convince them. And my uncle's trying to convince the Oakland uh, team or whatever that we were too scared to run them by themselves or by ourselves so that my dad and uncle could come with us. <laughs> 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 and the guys are looking at them like, no, sir, she's 13 years old. She's not four or five. You can't come from the bases. Um, and so my dad and uncle are like, okay, pretend like you pretend like you're going to trip and grab some dirt and make sure you get some chalk with it. Oh, and a little bit of grass too, like to steal it from the field. <laughs> so that, uh, so that my uncle could take it home with him. So that's, <laughs> that's one of my <laughs> favorite memories. Of course it was after a game. I don't necessarily remember the game, but, yeah. um, that's one of the, the cooler memories I have of the A's and, and, uh, the Coliseum. It's yeah, definitely like that feeling it, it's very like family oriented except when they're playing yeah. like boston or new york or san francisco like, don't take <laughs> your family to those games oh my grandpa's a boston fan we we brought him to one game and i think that was i've that. seen <laughs> multiple family members either get into or nearly get into a fight during those series <laughs> I, i've been doing it's i've been doing yeah, i've been to a battle of the bay where we were down on the bleachers and then like you know how like there's like the plaza level which is above it this like right. drunk asshole and his drunk like bitch ass girlfriend were just yelling down at like a group of ace fans being like hey fuck you they suck oh fuck God. you just like blowing up just like saying every curse word were that they, they could and just yelling <laughs> at a bunch of like a bunch of families and they're just like dude shut up like everybody was like like my yeah. aunt who was who was a giants fan like turn around and be like just like hey drunk drunk chick just like shut up you're like we're we're here with our kids and stuff like that i don't know it's kind of weird but anyway very yeah, kid friendly other than that had to yell at people about <laughs> yeah. yeah my dad's definitely had his fair share of yelling at people about cussing around <laughs> kids at, at yeah. Oakland. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's been that dad before <laughs> i could totally see your dad doing that yeah <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So then what's the best game you've seen in person? Uh, so this is the other reason I'm not allowed at any playoff games anymore. Okay. <laughs> so I was, um, at game five of Sunny versus Birdlander, of the ALDS, I think it was in 2013. Oh, God. I want to say. I know. Mm. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, obviously the outcome was not what we wanted at all, but it was my first playoff game. A friend of mine from my family vacation had free tickets from work about five rows behind home plate. Um, so, and like directly in line, you know, of, of, of home plate and the pitcher, pitcher's mound. Um, and just the energy, playoff energy is unreal. Yeah. I mean, it just, unless you're really into baseball, I guess, and are at a playoff game, especially with the A's <laughs> and it being game five um, with with the team that we had then it was just pretty incredible and even though i hate to admit it seeing verlander pitch was pretty cool i mean you get to see you know firsthand a lot of the movement that he puts on the ball and and kind of why he is you know the way that he is but um yeah coolest game i went to just because of, of where we were sitting who was playing the team was playing and um you know being it that it was playoff. And I think that's also... I forgot that they... You, uh, I was going to say just you as like a baseball fan too. Like it doesn't have to necessarily deal with the A's winning, but just seeing like arguably the best, if not one of the best pitchers of like the last yeah. 10 years kind of like yeah. paint his masterpiece as much as I hated it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's, that's the hard thing about it. And I remember, again, my dad, and a lot of my memories are with him at games, but I did not want to get up and clap for them. <laughs> when when they won and we're cheering and he's like you need to stand up and, and cheer for them and respect the team i'm like pouting <laughs> but, um really really cool experience overall and um you know next playoff game i go to it's not going to be a, a decision game <laughs> like a game one <laughs> um i 
I forgot that Sonny and Verlander went head to head twice in that series. In that series, because they yeah. went head to head game two. That was a game that I always talk about where they walked off. Um, and then that's right, game five. That was Sonny's rookie season, and Bob Melvin had him pitch two huge games in that series. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty intense. Yeah, um, and I think that's the biggest difference with the A's that get into the playoffs versus a lot of the teams is we're not, we usually yeah. have a lot younger of a team. We don't have as tenured of guys that know playoffs because it's a different, different kind of game there. Yeah. All right. So we have a, a couple, um, again, we don't want to be sexist, but we have a couple funny questions in terms of <laughs> just being a girl who is a big baseball fan and loves the sport. Um, because a lot of times guys will, um, assume girls don't know anything about sports so what's the yeah. like worst mansplain like sports mansplain <laughs> story that you've ever had where you just like wanted to punch the guy in the face you were just so frustrated like dude i probably know more about baseball than you yeah <laughs> um it's really funny because i i don't have a very specific example because i'm too much of a, a brat to deal with that i would just walk away <laughs> and like, not speak to that person if it even started i would just you guys saw the eye roll a little bit earlier. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's funny because Julio, I think, I don't know if we started this yet or if it was before we started recording, but um, it's more when I do start talking about baseball and I start talking about the A's, it's like I have to explain myself and I have to say, or people, I'll get the question like, well, what's the starting lineup? Who's the first baseman? Like, what's mm-hmm. the record right now? You know, I'm supposed to be, you know, the statistics major of the Oakland A's um, if I even drop that I that I like them. And I don't know, I'll ask you guys, I don't know if that's a question you get if you say you like a sports team, like you don't get asked why you like them. 100 percent. And hey, I will I will be the first to admit I have been a victim of doing that to a girl before. (laughs) And and it's more to Giants fans just because you're a victim of doing. Or sorry, uh, sorry. I am. I am guilty. <laughs> yeah, of doing I was like, that. come on. You're right. Wrong word. Wrong word. Wrong word. I am guilty of doing that, and I've done that to people before. But I've only ever done. I will say, I've only ever done it to Giants fans because all Giants fans are bandwagon, bandwagon fans that don't know fans. anything about their team. So I do it to all of them. It's okay, not that's just true. Girls. That's true. But Maybe I, I am. That too. <laughs> I am harder on girls because girls are more flamboyant about being a Giants fan. They'll post on like social media. Giants just won the World Series. This is so cool. And then it's like, all right, cool. Name five people on that team right now. Um, you yeah, can do that but, to a lot of people. I, but, right now, though, too. but yeah, <laughs> I yeah. But regard, but I I, sort of I will say I am people. I am definitely guilty of that, and I. I have tried my best to try and change that, and I apologize to any women that I've offended doing that in the past. The, so the only, now that I know that, I will try. I will. I will make an effort to try harder. The only team, or the yeah. only time I ever questioned somebody's like sports fandom, if it's just really random, if someone's just like, "Yeah, I'm a huge Kansas City Royals fan," I'm like, why? Like that's oh my gosh. that's just more of like I'm more like football team. <laughs> well, no, I know I know you're a Dolphins fan. I can't remember why, but it's just like it, there's only the story. It's usually like, oh yeah, my dad is from there, or like, oh my grandpa was a huge fan, or some something totally. like that. I was gonna say more. Usually that reason is more like unique and like a little bit like close to their heart than like just like I'm a Giants fan. You know what I mean? Like living yeah. in the Bay Area. Like there's obviously like a story behind that. Yeah, know. and I feel like just Giants. Oh God, I it's just, <laughs> it's just like it's like the cool team, and again, that's maybe why it's over the years I've gotten even more in love with the A's. It's because it's not necessarily cool to be mm-hmm. an A's fan, like it is a Giants fan. I mean, it's a hipster. Yeah, like you, <laughs> hipster. Yeah, you go to any, uh, you know, like how Walmart or Target always has that section for you know for sports stuff. They never, they have like one you know, little boys A shirt. They don't have anything else, but there's a ton of giant stuff always. And it's the one shirt that I'll have to use because I need a shirt for that day. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm kind of thinking about like type tangent real quick, but people's stories of like how they become fans. The one that's always interesting to me. And it just shows you like, this is just kind of like America is I had a coworker way back in the day who was a huge Braves fan. And he, I'm like, why would you be a Braves fan? He's like, well, Braves games were always on TBS when we were growing up because Turner owned the Braves or owns the Braves. Wow. It's like, oh, it's like, oh shit, never thought about that. I still yeah, thought he was sense. dumb, yeah. but. <laughs> 
it's like it's, it's not funny. too late to switch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's funny you say that, Tyler, about like the like you go to like Walmart and there's no A section, there's like a Giants. I use Giant section. I was just texting Julio about this on Friday because I went to Portland for a friend's birthday, and when we, we had a layover in San Jose, and I walk into like you know just like the newsstand shop to go get a water, and they have every sports team is represented except for the A's. They have Giants gear, they have Warriors gear, what? they have Sharks gear. They have Earthquakes gear, but not a uh, Niners gear, and they have n- absolutely no A's gear. None. I was just like, this is just is, a slap in the face. Do you think it has fittest. anything to do? Do you think it has anything to do? I remember, you know, when the A's were looking to move, we still are, but we looked at multiple different cities, and it was the Giants were, like, saying, well, this is our jurisdiction. This is our fan base. Do they have a monopoly on it? Probably. What can be sold? I wouldn't be shocked. That makes sense. But also, San Jose just kind of sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> if we... I agree. That's why I moved away. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's be real here. Like, you go to San Jose to go to a Sharks game. Um, if you want to get a really cheap flight, or like if you want to go to Great America, and that's pretty much it. And that's in Santa Cruz. Yeah. Yeah. That's not in San Jose. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. No, trust me. Th- three years was quite enough down there. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna take a, like a complete one hundred and eighty, and we're all we're gonna completely go against what we just said. Um, <laughs> who are the top five hottest A's of all time? Yes. Oh my gosh. I hope you guys have feedback. I wanna. I wanna. Oh, I already have my own. Down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, look at he's pulling out a list right now. He's he's got it. All right. So number five is a tie. Um, my favorite third baseman. Well. Second and third favorite third baseman. I have Matt Chapman and Josh Donaldson. Ooh, They're, Matt I'm Chapman usually, is good looking, huh? I don't know his hair. I'm not. I'm not about his hair for some reason. He's so. Cute. I'm usually not into like lighter, lighter hair guys, but I don't know. Maybe whatever they do at third base, it just it works. Ch- <laughs> Chappie's like a like a living in Orange County for three years. He's just kind of like your typical Orange County guy. But Do- Josh Donaldson, I see it. Josh yeah. Donaldson got a little wild side. Yeah. He's got a little flair to him. 100%. I, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good-looking guy. I did put him before Chappie on my list, so I guess he's a high five, but <laughs> there is a tie there. <laughs> I see what you did there. Play on words. I see what you did there. Uh, um, okay, number four is Houston Street. Ooh. He's Ooh, so cute. I did not see that one coming, but now I think about it, that is one handsome man. I mean, just the name. You can't not have him on your list. <laughs> <laughs> well, point. He's kind of like a shorter guy, though. But like, well, okay, don't, don't, don't judge him. I'm getting kind of like a with just the list already. Besides Chapman, I'm getting like a very rough around the red edges, kind of like a southern like type of feel that you're that you're going for. I guess we'll we'll see with these next few. Yeah, because okay. he did kind of have an accent, huh? So, yeah. but that's not what I was paying attention to. <laughs> Um, okay, number three is Matt Olson. So on the other oh, spectrum, yeah. I guess, of height, he is just beautiful. I think he's like six, six three or six four. Um, a fellow first baseman. He got his gold glove tonight. Woo-hoo. Yeah, me and uh, me and Julio are both like have said like how, like we feel like he's so good looking, but it all it's always the guys who you think are the hottest are the guys that girls don't think and, are hot. So we could we could never tell. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm curious to see your. Guys. And he's you know also from though? the south. It's oh, Georgia, maybe oh, like a he? good little southern gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's what's funny though, too, is like when I see guys playing, I'm I'm thinking, you know, they're so cute, and then I'll look them up, and their pictures are just horrible. Those baseball photos <laughs> that they take are, like are the, not doing well, anybody like favors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, number two is Eric Chavez. Ugh, I mean, what Jen. a man. That, I've been hearing about him. Base. I've been hearing about him for like twenty years, and the people still don't like shut up about how good looking he is. It's insane. I mean, yeah, he's a good looking guy. Um, and number one is Nick Swisher, of yeah, course. I've got coming. got my OG love for him. He had like the long hair when I started watching baseball, and that's sort of my thing. And again, he played first base, so I kind of really focused on him (laughs) he uh, he he kind of do you is it the like goofiness is that part of it too and like the kind of like just the he is super goofy too and i like i was kind of obsessed with him like i started memorizing 
and doing what he would do when he'd walk up to the plate. Like, he always put his bat, you know, to the other side of the field. And then, yeah. He was just the big party <laughs> boy. Out. He was, he was definitely, sure, he, he yeah. had big frat guy energy. Oh, 1,000%. 1,000%. <laughs> yeah, he he was probably a wild one in that group, I can see. Um, Now that I think about it, he looks very similar to your fiancé. To Nick. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, his name's Nick. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, like, somehow fulfilling my destiny. <laughs> That's, all right, I guess I'll settle for Nick. <laughs> oh, I got to tell Nick that. Um, I did want to mention, though, the best-looking baseball player ever is Grady Sizemore from the Indians. He, oh, he interesting. Was he was a handsome man. Oh, He's wow. Like, I'm glad you agree. He literally had a fan mm. club called Grady's Ladies. <laughs> 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 I think I, I wonder... was too young to join it, but... <laughs> I wonder what his coverage was. Like, what, what, like how, how hot is his wife, do you think? We can look Are at you this trying letter. to find Google his... Right. Rank his confidence... <laughs> Oh, oh, I mean, a I little think he bit, has yeah. Some nudes come out of him at some point in life. So. Oh, that is a good-looking dude. I've never, I haven't looked I at like, him. I remember, Grady, yeah, I was like Grady Sizemore, like his first couple seasons, because he was like the next heir apparent, and like, and he's hot. It's like he's got yeah. everything. <laughs> Apparently, he dated a playboy named Brittany Binger for a very long time. That's all I can Aussie. find. She's all right. Anyway, okay, so let's get to the <laughs> let's get to the actual. Uh, Let's get to the actual podcast. All right, let's Wait, start it no, up. So, what about uh, ours? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Julio, um, I want to know yours. You look very excited about this. All right, so I, let's, I'm trying to – I'm very debatable. Honorable mention, but he's off my list because he's turning kind of a scumbag, Mark Mulder. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, number five, I got to go with the Brad Pitt knockoff of Bobby Crosby. We all remember the old commercial. Oh, I did love him. Mm. Did love Bobby. Uh, number four, mm. I'm going to go with uh, Ramon Hernandez. My sister-in-law was obsessed with him. And I was like, <laughs> I get it. I understand why. Number three, Ollie. Again, giant man, yeah. beautiful eyes, quiet, <laughs> great game. Uh, number two is Barry Zito. Uh, big reason. Okay. I think he had that early 2000s look where like, the Brendan Boyd of Incubus kind of thing going on. I was like, totally like dug really it. Killed it. And number one, uh, play guitar. Yeah. And I have, I had to do this for my mom. Number one, Dennis Eckersley, voluptuous what? hair, what? gigantic mustache. Stop. Number one, number one. I just, this is a shout out for my mom more than anything there for some oh reason. Uh, she must love those running heads. In our, in our, <laughs> in our hallway, uh, uh like, like closet it's kind of like a little bit ba- basement slash closet there was always a picture of dennis eckersley there <laughs> it's like full in interesting closet? it was like oh a that's a weird that's an interesting place to put it and then there's a was it like a shrine it, was, to him? it, was like, it could have been my mom always told oh he looks like your dad i'm like not really were there candles yeah there probably the <laughs> probably but i would i would say that that's great. that was a little biased but if i had to go number eckersley. one overall it goes either chris so I, I don't I don't have one I did not prepare one I but oh, I, I I will say hold on hold on hold on I will say that I'm a little shocked that Eric Burns isn't on any of these lists um, he definitely would have been on mine um, yeah I don't like your Bobby Crosby one though nothing about him would make me be like like if I was at a bar and I saw Bobby Crosby there I wouldn't be like intimidated I wouldn't be like huh. I'd just be like all right he's here so Bobby I think Crosby I still got I, th- I think I still got my I think I still got my chance whereas like. <laughs> If Eric Burns was in the bar, I would be like, I need to go make friends with him so I can hang out with him tonight at the bar and just take his runoff. <laughs> you guys know what runoff is? <laughs> I just, yes, like the extras. The only th- oh, yeah, exactly. The only exactly. thing it's is a, he's it's, such it's, an it's, energetic uh, person, it might, like, kill the buzz for some people around, like, oh, I don't <laughs> Some people like the, like, the you know, the, the, oh the calm guy. So I just got to be the calm guy and then, you know, just – yeah, what's up? Cool, nice. Even though that's not my personality at all whatsoever. All right, let's let's hop in. Let's hop into Great like talk. the actual podcast. <laughs> Chris is um, all right, so let's jump into the news around the league. So, um, first thing we will do, um, you know, I we were gonna talk about the update the standings, but I kind of want to wait a little bit to see if this game gets done, um, because it's pretty close to being over, even though it's still two two. 
because that'll change things. So why don't we start with Eric Hosmer? Uh, he fractured his uh, finger. finger while bunting, which totally blows. He's going to be out two to six weeks, which means he's pretty much out for the rest of the regular season. If he came back, it'd only be like, um, I don't know, maybe the third round, I would think, right? Because there's two and a half weeks left in the season. Um, first round's going to be quick because it's only a three-game series. So, Is that the new wild card format? Y- yeah. So how the like playoff standings kind of work is like the winners of each um, division are one, two, and three seed. And then second place in each division is four five and six and then there's two wild cards who can come that can come from any division so like the astros are in second right now they get automatic bid to the playoffs if they're in second like it yeah it just doesn't matter it's kind of weird it's kind of like hockey but kind of not um so hosmer's been having a great season i think this this is an interesting situation i know they just loaded up but it's an interesting situation for the padres i don't know what do you think Julio? yeah uh it sucks because, yeah, he's – after signing that contract, what was that, in 2017, 2018, he hasn't really yeah. lived up to what he was in Kansas City. But he's really become one of their better players and kind of like the leader of that team more or less because of veteran experience, again, championship experience with Kansas City. But they're going to be in pretty good shape because, like you said, they just loaded up. They just got Mitch Moreland. If they need to give him a day off or if they want to have – um uh, Moreland DH. Uh, we know Jerickson Profar, former Oakland great. He has some experience at first base. Uh, former Oakland great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They're everywhere. Yeah, exactly. We're sprinkled all over the league. But yeah, they definitely have their options. It's We'll see how it's really going to affect them in terms of their schedule. I haven't had a chance to pull up who they're playing yet. But if they're going to be playing the Rockies and the Diamondbacks, then that they're going to be in good shape. But I don't think it's going to affect them too much, though, for the rest of the way. What do you think, Tyler? I think – don't they play us coming up in at least the next couple of weeks? Mm-hmm. They have another no, series. No, I think yeah. that was just – they just had the one series. I Are you sure? I think, yeah, let me double check. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think with anybody going out like that, if, I think he's he's a pretty good hitter, right? So mm-hmm. that's that's definitely a gap in their lineup. It really depends on how how deep their bench goes and you know the replacements there. Two to six weeks at the end of the season is really sucky. Yeah, <laughs> and potentially going into playoffs. This is and this is a guy who's a really good defensive ca- uh, first baseman. So Julio, in remarks in regards to you, what you said about um, like he hasn't lived up to his contract. I feel like he kind of actually has though. Like so, so he's been there for three. This is his third season. He said. He's always kind of lived around 20 home runs. Like, he's never been a big, like, bomber guy. Um, and he had 18 in 2018. And he had 22 in 2019. He hit 250 in 2018, 265 in 2019. But that's in a pitcher's ballpark, so it's a little bit different. Um, he didn't win a gold glove, which he was a past four-time gold glove winner. I think it's just because he played for a shitty team in San Diego the past couple of years that people have kind of, like, assumed that he just has been playing up to his contract. But... I mean, he, this year he's hitting 288, and he had eight home runs. Like, he's this is definitely what probably his better year of the three. But he, he's been playing up to par. And if I remember right, I I could be wrong. I have to look up the specifics about it. But I'm pretty sure the Padres actually moved up the fences a little bit too. So that shows you a little bit of like their Did offense. Like they? this this. Yeah, I got it. But I, I mean, I do kind of agree with you though. He signed a hundred forty-four million eight-year contract. That's pretty significant. Wild. Um, yeah, that team is so loaded though. I mean, They're, I'm sure they'll figure it out. They might fall a couple, like maybe one standing, but they were never gonna top the Dodgers anyway. They just, I mean, they 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 got a lot of talent, but they weren't good enough. We don't know. There's there's so much. Anything can happen. Especially in the three-game series, look what happened last year with the Nationals as a wild card when they threw out um, Corbin Scherzer and, and Strasburg against the Dodgers. Like they knocked them out. I, I just mean they weren't going to top the Dodgers in the division. Oh, that's, oh, that's uh, more yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Uh, why not? Speaking of which, since we're talking about first baseman, I know we didn't bring this up during uh, the pre-show stuff because I think this just happened pretty recently. Uh, but the Giants made a 
waiver wire move, and they picked up Justin Smoke. Did they really? Yeah. Uh, for- does Does he have anything left? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. Uh, l- let's see. He this is his third team, more or less, in the last month. Because yeah. he was with the Blue Jays. An interesting move. And then he got waived, and then the, the I was about to say the Bucks. Uh, the Brewers picked him up, and then they waived him, and then now the Giants are so yeah. maybe. I don't know. He hasn't you really done much since he left. To... Sorry, go ahead. You think they're trying to kind of start start young a little bit and move move the the old bucks out? <laughs> Look, young yeah. to the Giants is thirty. They're in, they're in my mindset, which is like point. early thirties. That's a very young person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's even thirty um, near twenty. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, there there was a man on first and a man on third in the bottom of the ninth, and Steven Piscotti just got thrown out in a rundown, so I don't think this game's going to end anytime soon, so we'll go jump into the standings. Um, right now, the A's still sit at the number two seed at 25-15. The Rays are at the one seed. Um, Indians at the three. This is the American League, by the way, for the listeners. Um, the White Sox are at the four seed. The Blue Jays are at the five seed. The Astros are at the six seed. The Twins are at the seventh seed, and the Yankees are at the eighth seed, and sitting half a game behind the Yankees at nine to try and get in in that eighth seed is the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> um, is there a world in which the Yankees don't make the playoffs this year? No, not even twenty twenty can get rid of them. Uh, and as I say that right now, Ramon Laureano just hit a Ramon! massive double, and the A's win the walk off. So great! <laughs> um, oh, I wish I could be there. But I don't know. The Yankees are still really injury ridden. Um, Julio, me and you have talked a lot about how we kind of like the three seed better than the two seed right now because the Astros seem like a better opponent than the Twins. Um, I don't know. Yeah. A lot to unpack here, guys. I, I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but um, just want to paint a picture. It's, if we were talking last year, I wouldn't want to be playing the Astros at all. But yeah. this year's <laughs> without uh, without their cheating, it seems we can beat them. And well, and plus, like if their best pitcher is Granky, and the A's knocked him around the other day on Monday, then let's see. Right now, they just showed a, the update on uh, NBC Sports Bear or California five and a half game lead on the Astros. So that's pretty badass. Solid. And we also well, so they just took two or three. Um, we haven't had too many major updates on with Verlander's injury. It doesn't sound like he's going to be coming back, though. And if he doesn't, then that's just that's better for everyone. Yeah, it's better that's for huge. baseball. Twenty twenty has been horrible, but if the <laughs> Astros just playing getting decimated before they even make it to the playoffs happens, and it makes everything a little bit better. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so and then we want to finish it off with news around the league with a um, uh, big RIP to uh, Tom Seaver, the um, Hall of Fame pitcher for the um, New York Mets in the mostly 80s, uh, passed away last week. And then Lou Brock, um, the Ricky Henderson before Ricky Henderson uh, passed away as well, another Hall of Famer. So rest in peace to those guys. Um couple of grades it's i don't know it's funny that you that like we brought Ty, now that it's really coming full circle because tyler was just talking about how her dad was a huge cardinals fan so yeah i can only imagine yeah, you know how things have been if i don't know if your dad was old enough to see him play back in the day but i think he was too poor to see him play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no i it's actually well, not interesting, really. But when I worked at the Cheesecake Factory, there was a guy that came in and brought me three Cardinals jerseys because I told him my dad was a huge fan. Yeah. Um, he brought me Ozzie Smith, Mark McGuire, and Lou Brock's, like, super nice jerseys. Nice. Um, and so my dad has them. And so, uh, you know, when that news came out, he sent me his jersey. And RIP. Cool. Legend. It's pretty interesting, though, that uh, the pitcher – that Lou Brock faced the most in his history in baseball was Tom Seaver. So really? that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're talking about how weird things are. 
Uh, yeah, he, he didn't do great, I'll tell you that. He hit 250, hit a couple triples off of him. But that's just so interesting that that connection is still there. Um, yeah. But it, I was actually reading the, an art, uh, athletic article last night. Chris, I don't know if you had a chance to see it or not. And Tyler, I don't know if you have a subscription or not. Uh, but they're kind Probably of not. breaking down the franchise, who's each team's franchise players, and whether what's debatable, which ones are like, yeah, they pretty much are, but there's some wiggle room, and ones are like, yeah, no comment, it's that person kind of thing. Mm-hmm. There was only, I believe, two players who were like the, there's no contest. And it was Tony Gwynn for the Padres and then Tom Seaver for the Mets. Um, like his nickname was, really? his nickname was the franchise back in the day. Actually, you know what? That No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And if you just go look at some of his numbers throughout his like tenure with the Mets, like the, the guys put up like some of the best seasons ever. Wait, it, it wasn't Ricky for the A's? It wasn't like a no contest? It was pretty close, but they also went through like the whole entire history. So if like Lefty uh, Grove and Jimmy Fox and yeah, uh, and then like Catfish, it goes like that. But like, I, yeah, I think for us, it, it's easily Ricky, but there's just a lot of debate if you look back the whole era. Yeah. But Okay, cool. Let's um, let's jump into um, this past week um, and any A's news. Yeah. Um, so this past week we had a uh, very um, important uh, in terms of like maybe a preview of what could be at the World Series. You know, fingers crossed, maybe thinking too, um, hopefully. But anyway, uh, series against the Padres. Um, Friday the 4th, we lost 0-7, to seven, so that was pretty brutal. Um, then Saturday we came back and scored eight runs and won 8-4, to four, which was like very encouraging. I remember – texting you Julio about that and being like, Oh, it's going to be a wrap tomorrow. And then we lose on Sunday, the six, three to five. Um, I don't know. I didn't get to watch too much of these games cause I was in Portland. Um, what, what, what did you, what did you guys see Julio? Padres are really fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Long story short. Um, Fernando Tatis jr. Is the best player in baseball. And he just killed us that whole weekend, man. It yeah. was just like, Every at bat, like, ah, oh, shit. What's he gonna do now? Cool, he hit another <laughs> home run. All right. Um, yeah, they're they're a major force to be reckoned with, especially if it's gonna be in this three game wild card picture. Um, there's not much too else to add to it. They are just they look like the far more superior outside of Saturday. Like the other two games, they just look like the way way better team. Yeah. I think I was so we confident because I was also, also in, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're not we, a slump, but I, um, <laughs> our Corona break, I guess. Yeah. The all-star and, break and, and of it kind of, it kind of slows momentum a little bit. So like when things mm-hmm. like that happen, uh, I mean, look at Ramon Laureano and his slump that he's in right now. Like he, he was so hot and then he gets a suspension and completely just, look, yeah. just dumps it down. Were, were these the games, Julio too, that they're, there seems to be a lot of contention over some um, play reviews and some calls that were made there. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you kind of brought that up because something we forgot to lead off the show with. There were a lot of really bad calls that were – I think Friday night was the play at home with Matt Olson, where it looked like it was – it looked safe. If you watched it from multiple angles, and then, of course, he was out, and I believe there was another play at home. I want to say it was with Robbie Grossman. Grossman. Yeah. Uh, that was also looked safe out and that's just a dip it's just a huge difference maker and that's mm-hmm. that's something we should have done on the fix it segment is replay it's nice that we have it but it still kind of sucks it still kind of ruins the point of this whole replay system which is like something that should be figured out in a minute it's like all right we have the camera we're talking to new york it goes out to like two three minutes I but saw someone post right. the other day. I I I think it was Brody Brazil who was like made a comment just real quick before he said it. Who made a comment? Um, is the like lack of like um the bad review or um uh, replay review um assessment and all that stuff by the umpires? Is this a um a circumstance of like just older umpires in general? Do does the MLB need to get some younger, more like? You know, um, not as uh, stubborn um, 
umpire is in there. I mean, like, I know we've been, like, really kicking this can all season long, Julio, on about... Uh, boomers. Um, yeah, about boomers, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I really don't, but it's just, like... <sighs> It, it's kind of it's kind of being right. I mean, anytime you see someone argue with an umpire, it's, they're like they're not willing to hear him out, kind of like an NBA ref does. They're like going back at him, and it's just like that's not that's not the way to do this. Like this is like your job is to is to make sure the game is played to the rules, and if you're not gonna abide yeah. by them because you're too stubborn, then then what the fuck are we even doing here? Yeah, you're a support system to the game. Yeah, you, know, you don't rule it. I love that analogy, support system. But also, like, I also love that, Chris, you brought up with, like, basketball. You have to be so intentive with the NFL and hockey as a referee because you're constantly moving with the action. You're moving all over the place, and you kind of need to be in peak shape for that. Umpires, you don't – you just stand there, and you're just like, "Uh, uh, that look good. (laughs) And it's, it's it's a weird thing because that's what makes baseball so special is that human element. And even when the when umpires are wrong, uh, you're like, oh fuck, it's that's kind of the game. But it's becoming the point where it's becoming pretty egregious and it's getting really exaggerated. But then yeah. we finally won a replay uh, on Tuesday, and uh, I made a really crappy meme and made it, put it on Twitter, and it blew up. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, Tyler, we didn't tell you that. On the page. We oh, didn't tell yeah, you that. Yeah, we we uh we went viral the past two days. Yeah, we, nice. that should have been let off the show. Yeah, I just made a really cr- <laughs> in, in case you didn't see it, I'll make a, a brief description. Uh and the the I believe it's the left field tarps or like the lengths of foul pole. They have like the years of the championships. In the third deck. Third deck yeah. Yes, thank you. Mm-hmm. And underneath the nineteen eighty nine I just wrote twenty twenty one a replay and circled it. And it just put on Twitter. And so it looks like a over, banner. It blew up. Yeah, it looks like a banner. We got over 200 likes and 35 retweets on it. <laughs> we put I put it on the A's Twitter, and it got, dude, Chris, it got over like 300 th- or 300 upvotes on Twitter. I thought you, I was going to say 300,000. No fucking 300,000. No, no. But, um, and because of that. On Reddit, you mean. On Reddit, right? On Reddit. And then we gained yeah. over like something close to like 50 Twitter <laughs> followers. Because of that, so no, we're up to like eighty. We gained up to like eighty followers after that. One. Yeah, so um, um, if this is the meme king, yeah. So if <laughs> yeah. this is uh, some of our new Twitter followers listening, uh, thank you. Be sure to stay <laughs> on board for our future shit posts. <laughs> shit posts. That's what we're calling them. Um, all right, uh, and then uh, another recent series, which actually ended up good. Um, we did four games against the Astros. We have a fifth tomorrow because um, we overlapped for one of them. There was a doubleheader on the eighth in order to make up the series that we missed in Houston a couple weeks ago. So on Monday the 7th, we won 6-0. to uh, The first game of the doubleheader on Tuesday, we won 4-2. to Second game, we lost 4-5. to And then today, we win 3-2 to in the bottom of the ninth. Walk off, um, classic walk off fashion. Um, so fun times. Um, some more news: AJ Puck has been shut down. Is it for the season? I can't remember. I don't think so. It just was not what I read. Yeah, it, it they was they, just they, like... they they kind of were very vague on what was going on with him. Mm-hmm. It's if I remember right here, I'll pull it up right now. Um, He's visiting a specialist, and if it's Dr. James Andrews, we know that's game, that he's not coming back. Um, yeah, that that might be a sign of Tommy John. Um, that's yeah, not he's, good. He's seeking a shoulder specialist. But yeah. Um, that would be his second either one. Way. Oh, it's not his elbow, though. It's his shoulder. Okay. That's, that's it's better shoulder news. Shoulder strain, I think. Is that what he's feeling? Um, here, for well, this is a quote. This is actually from a, a website called the White Cleat Beat. It's part of a fan sided website. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're he's they're visiting Doctor Eltrache. I don't I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Sorry. Um, it's not always name. a death kneel for a pitcher, but it's usually not positive. Mm-hmm. So, I think a faithful like being optimistic about it, he'll probably be shut down for the year, which is not great. But it could be worse. It could be like 
a whole nother year thing, but we'll see. Yeah, that blows, man. He's been around. He's been supposed to like come up next week, come up next week, come up like all season. I feel like every episode we've said like AJ Puck's leaning around the corner, like he's coming, and then he just like doesn't come. <laughs> uh, okay, um, interesting. Yeah, it's tough when you think you're gonna fill another spot in the uh, in the bullpen with yeah. someone strong, and then. Once again, maybe a whole another year we won't have him. And it, it, Tyler, what it, do you what what do you think? Can I ask you this question? Do you do you think that he should be a bullpen guy long term, or would you like to see him in the start in the starting rotation? I'd like to see him start. Yeah, I would prefer that. I think that'd be exciting, but I mean, but also when you're injury ridden like that, I mean, he's had a lot lot of problems. It seems like. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's hard to put somebody and then want to rely on them, mm. you know, when when we may potentially have to pull them regularly. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking you because uh, Mason had talked about when he came on that he thought he should be a, a, a reliever. So, anyway. Mm. What, what were you going to say, Julio? Sorry. It also, but no, um, Tyler has a good point, though. It's just like if he's – we've shown – this is what – if this is something major, this is the third more or less major injury he's had in the – Two, like he's supposed to come up in 2018, and then that's when he had to get Tommy John at, in spring training, if I remember right. But I was going to say, uh, this really hurts what they could have done at the trade deadline because the A's were in talks yeah. to pick up, try to get Trevor Rosenthal. Um, I know, and Chris's pipe dream was we were going to go after Josh Hader, but that <laughs> we knew that was probably <laughs> way too hefty. But it kind of screws it up. So hopefully there's an outside chance if they don't feel confident with like Caprillion is now in the bullpen after I'm just so tired of talking about him on the show because it keeps going up and down and all that. <laughs> um, and now Mangden is on the COVID list be- because he was the case. Uh, mm-hmm. There's going to be some question marks of like, who's going to be our stretch guys. Mike Miner could fill that, but he, we also want him as a starter. There's a lot of, question marks hopefully a team that's kind of out of contention will start throwing some guys on waivers and we can make a move for a bullpen but yeah not looking great for a puck hey josh Hader was a pipe dream but it wasn't out of the realms of reality after we heard that they were making a serious run of trevor rosenthal it was not out of the realms of reality and we looked at his contract julio he's up contract he's on contract for a few more years but billy bean <laughs> likes those guys okay just saying Chris is still fighting for this. <laughs> no, I'm t- hey, I just I, I'm just you know I just just want to defend my take. Um, all right, so last couple things. Matt Chapman um, uh, has uh, what what was his injury again? Hip, oh, totally blanking. Hip, hip, that's right. Um, had a hip injury, so he's been out recently. Um, he hasn't been put on the injured list though, so I don't know if it's that serious. Marcus Simeon has returned. He looked pretty great today. I think he was the one who hit the walk off today, so that's kind of cool. Um, okay. been playing short stuff too, so that's been good. Uh, okay, cool. Let's hop into our um, last week's essential tailgate tools of the week, Julio, and then um, Tyler, you can comment on them and see what you think about them. Um, Julio, you can go first. Yeah. So my essential tailgate was the kind of fringe bullpen guys, which is like, hey, what's going to happen to you? What are you going to do when we get Mike Biner or any other? Or that's when we thought Agent Puck was coming up. Uh, yeah. And my three nominees, a part of that, were Daniel Magden, who got COVID. So I don't think he's <laughs> really in. Jeez. Yeah, it's like, good job, bud. Um, Jordan Weems. We haven't seen too much of him since he's come back from injury. Um, yeah. And during that time, he hasn't been too bad. I'm trying to pull up the specific stats. But the one person that I've been – oh, here we go. Over the last seven games, Jordan Weems has – a 2.57 ERA. He's um, he's pitching 40 games, struck out seven, given up one walk. So he's been good, solid. It's been fine. Uh, yeah. But Lou Trevino looks like he's coming back up to form. He's been looking good, man. He's been coming in in like crucial innings too. Like Bob Melvin definitely trusts him more now. And this not only could be big for uh, our playoff push over the next month and a half or so or two months fingers crossed but for the future because again Liam Hendricks is going to be gone next season the odds are that that's going to happen and we are going to find somebody who's going to be our closer for the future and if he can get anywhere close to where he was 
in his uh, rookie season back in 2018, then that's a great start. And plus, he had a three pitch inning the other night, and that was like the first. Oh. That was the first time that it happened. I think it was um, Tim Hudson did it. I saw. I, sub, I think it was um, oh, who tweeted it. One of the A's stack guys always posts stuff, but it's like Tim Hudson did it against the Mariners. And one of the guys he got out on one pitch was each row. So anytime you can do that against each row, great job. <laughs> that was like actually a really fun inning to watch. Um, what do you think about that pick, Tyler? I think, I mean, bullpen depth is just so critical throughout the season, yeah. but really you're always building it for playoffs because, you know, they say pitching wins playoffs, you know, not, not offense. And so, Obviously, you've got to have your strong starters, but flexibility and depth within within that bullpen there um, and having closers and having people that you can pull, especially if our, our starters aren't really pulling their inning weight as, <laughs> as they are right now. Um, yeah, I'd say it's pretty key. Yeah, I I, uh, I dig that one, especially, I mean, you brought up the whole, like, Liam Hendricks thing with, I, I don't think we've talked about that on air. I think we talked about that, a lot of that, like, uh, off air over, over text, like, the reality of the situation is Liam Hendricks is on his last year of his deal. Um, he's going to be a free agent this season. We have never seen Billy Bean or David Forrest sign um, a long-term or re-sign a relief pitcher. He's just they, That's just not what he does. He just tries to find guys in the system to take over that role, and he always does. He's, he's, he's successful with it, so why would he do anything else? And it's good to see Lee uh, Lou Trevino do that. I don't know if he's necessarily going to be the next closer, but it's good to see like that promise and at least be like a cornerstone for you know the end of our bullpen in the coming years. Um, but yeah, the Megden thing kind of fucked up your pick a little bit, though. Well, <laughs> it kind of just kinda, well, I guess he's the odd man out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I it's mean, like he didn't make the hunger but, games. But here's the thing: there, there, there kind of isn't an odd man out anymore because AJ Puck isn't looming anymore. So there's like, you know, but James. Well, Caprillion, I guess Mike Minor, James Caprillion Mike Minor, oh, and James Minor, Caprillion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so mine was Frankie Montas, which we talked about in this last episode. That was started out being a shitty pick because he just got fucking rocked last week. Um, <laughs> but he pitched again yesterday and gotta say i'm looking pretty good with that pick just saying uh half and half. <laughs> yeah half and half there you go and um he looked i mean so let me hold on, let me see let me see the actual box score so i can get these stats it was right. easily so his best start and like a he month. he gave up two runs but he only gave up two hits the two runs came on that one home run um only four strikeouts and one walk he, so but he he went five innings which is good he ate up some innings and and it was only a seven inning start, so he ate up a lot of innings in theory, I guess you could say. Um, but he looked promising, and he had been rough the past two weeks ever since that injury. So I feel pretty good about it now. I feel pretty good about it. Had he sucked yesterday, I would have I would have been shamed. And then the 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 Chris Madrigal essential tailgate tool curse would be actual an actual thing. Every time, so every time I pick someone on here, they've like done the opposite of what I I've said that they need to do for. Essential tailgate tool. It's just been like a thing all season. So, breaking the curse, guys. Well done. Well done. <laughs> That's it. Right, <laughs> Good job. No, no. Um, but Frankie, yeah, that like it, it's it was his best start in a while. Maybe we should just have him pitch only against the Astros because he seems to really have their number this season. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, so let's pick a player of the week, Tyler. Since you are the guest, you may go first. Okay, this is going to seem questionable, but I just have a little hope for him. I know everyone's given up on him, but I just want to give some kudos to Chris Davis because he finally hit the ball. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, You had one job. So I I know that was just that one game. He had a home run, uh, I think a double, a couple RBIs. But you can see even with the team how excited they were for Mm -hmm. him. I mean, I could just imagine at, at that level getting into a slump as bad as he's hopefully getting out of, but that he was in, um, I mean, that's just a deep hole to dig out of. So I'm going to give it to him. Nice. Julio? Love it. Yeah, he's, especially with all these double headers coming up, like he's going to be playing a lot. And if he can mm-hmm. get something of what he's been the last few seasons, it's going to be excellent. 
there's a lot of there's three guys that I really like this this past week, um, and oh God, I'll give you my honorary mention at the end. Are you deciding between two right now? Yeah, because I think I know who you're gonna pick. But um, I'm gonna go with the unconventional person person and go with the female machine. I hate that pick. I fucking hate it. I I'm just not a machine fan. I'm sorry. I just I can't stand it. But you know, you have you're entitled to your opinion. Okay. Now are you gonna let me explain why I picked him? Yes. I just wanted that to be known before you got into it. Okay. So the last week he's had a fill in for Matt, he, Marcus Simeon, Matt Chapman. The glove is not there, and that's pretty obvious. But in his last 16 at bats in this last week, he has a 375 average. He's ground two walks. And uh, there was I, – I don't know how this last couple at-bats went because we were filming or recording. Um, he's gone on base in five straight at-bats. And look, we this was a, a, a Rule 5 guy that we picked up from the Cubs. We don't know what the expectations are. Probably we don't know if he's even going to be on the roster the next year. But when your star third baseman and arguably your best player on your team and – arguably your second or third best player in the team are out are both out and you need to fill in that void and you have somebody who again not putting up power numbers but they're being productive like that's huge especially against the astros who the astros are despite us shitting on them they're still a pretty high scoring team overall and against the padres who are like arguably one of the best teams of baseball like i gotta give you gotta give credit where credit's due uh he could be a reliable guy if we need somebody to pinch hit later down the line when guys are healthy or run for bases. So I just want to give my credit. Okay. Do you still hate it? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I get it. I get it. But the dude played like two games, I think in the past week. So like, yeah, he like took yes, over two, for games, two games in that rule. He had eight at bats in both games. That's right. Eight at bats. Well, he had 16 at bats. How is he going to have 16 at bats in two games? You weren't even watching games this past weekend because you were drunk in Portland. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, I just, I'm, I, I just, you know, he's taken away like he's taken away playing time from from guys I like. That's all I'm saying. All right, fine. Okay, good pick. Well done. I'm happy he's a hit for you. Proud of you. I don't, I don't tell you that enough. Um. <laughs> Okay, mine is, uh, I don't know if you do know what mine's going to be. Mine is, uh, <laughs> this is more because I want to brag about it and I want to say a big fuck you to Mason. Uh, mine is is uh, Chris Bassett. Um, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. Mason said when he came on this podcast, and you've been saying, well, you haven't been saying, but you've been kind of agreeing with him that Chris Bassett is not a number three starter that you want to go into a playoff series with. But he has proven time and time again this season that he can be that guy. His last start was on the seventh. He went seven innings, only gave up seven hits, four strikeouts. He fucking did work. Once again, he fucking put the team on his back. He has the lowest ERA of all of our starters um, in terms of, like, overall, like, stats because he actually has, like, starts to get, you know, stats out of. 3.12 total ERA. He's been fucking killing it. He will be a great um, th- number three starter in a playoff series. Um, he will be the um, established vet in our rotation for years to come. So mine is Chris Bassett. Who do you think mine was going to be? Tommy LaStella. No, I actually um, – uh, is that what you thought it was going to be too? <laughs> Tyler? No, no. Oh, <laughs> I didn't. I had no. I said he's cute. <laughs> I have oh, no idea who he was going to be. No, yeah, dude, he's um, bat, he bat two ninety two over the last week. Did the he? Lead off. So he, he definitely he, got on tonight. I yeah, said that. yeah. He he's he's hitting two seventy five now, but he um uh he his average kind of went down. It felt like the past couple games. I want to say at the end of yesterday, he was hitting like two, or at the end of fuck, maybe it was the end of uh of Tuesday. He was hitting like 267 and I was like, God damn, did he like hit a slump this weekend? Like I think what just the hell happened? maybe playing at the Coliseum, who knows? But honestly, as long as look, he doesn't strike out. That's amazing yeah. to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just somebody not strike out. But my backup, my other option was going to be Sean Murphy. He hit two he hit 364 the he's last He's looking week. nice now. Yeah, he's been he's, he's been, been playing on a lot better. Tear. All right, cool. So we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back back with our feature segment this week. Um, 
yeah so we'll, we'll be right back okay welcome back everybody um so let's hop into it um fellas and lady um this year or this week's uh feature segment is going to be called it's time to focus because we are getting to the crunch time of the season the playoffs are right around the corner which we have alluded to quite a bit um especially last week's episode um and it's really time to like start tightening up because the, the, here's the thing with baseball it's always the hottest team going into the postseason that makes like the insane run or wins it all. Um, look at the Nationals last year, hottest team going into the postseason. They take down the the uh, the Astros. Um, look at the Cubs in 2016, same situation. Uh, I mean, all pretty much all of the Giants, like all three of their World Series at the beginning of the decade. Um, so this is a segment where we're all going to think of two things that the A's need to focus on. Um, Tyler, you can go first. Your first one. We'll, and we'll go in a circle. So we'll each do one and then we'll each do another one. All right. Socially distant okay, Zoom cool. circle. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Ugh, I hate social distance. I'm so <laughs> done with that. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess my first one then, I'm taking kind of two principles from when I, when I played softball and I'm just hearing my dad in my head yelling this, <laughs> um, is score early and score often. So I, I think what we see with the A's a lot is they either wait a long time. I mean, exhibit A tonight, yes, it worked out. Um, but as we go into to harder games, into the playoff games, that that can't work. We've got to do it. We've got to do it early. And then score often as well. I mean, it's nice to have an inning where we score two or three, but if that's all we do, um, for the rest of the game, if we do that in the fourth inning, the fifth inning, um, it makes it a lot easier for, for people to come from behind there. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of been our MO the past like three seasons or two, uh, two seasons. So like the fact that we're kind of struggling with that this season is like, I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating. And I, I, I when you, I'm, when you're saying that in the pre-show, cause we all kind of shared to make sure that we, we didn't like double up. Uh, we like me and uh, Julio's eyes like kind of got wide and we we're just like, started nodding like yeah that makes a lot of sense um yeah i mean i don't know julio what's your two cents on that one yeah it was something i can't remember if we brought up off air for this is a last week episode because i don't know what what time is anymore but we had said how i i think something that was going to be a concern going into this last month of the season with all these double headers was the seven inning games and that historically at least in this season the A's have always been getting to the bullpen really well and then the starters are, which is kind of weird because it's like when you see a starter the second time through you think you'd hit them better but yeah here we are uh and they're not so that's kind of the interesting thing like if they can get those first couple innings run I believe they did in one of the games yesterday um Tuesday if they can keep that consistently, especially with like somebody like La Stella at the top of the lineup, they they could be able to do it, and they should. They need to. Yeah. There's no, no room for error. You have to, yeah. All right, Julio, what's your, your first one? Uh, this is kind of a sp- uh, more sports-wide thing, really, but especially this last month of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't downplay your opponents. Yeah. I, I believe that, like, the beginning of this podcast when we're looking at the season preview we saw the last few weeks of the season and we're like all right it looks pretty easy we got the rockies the giants the dodgers and seattle to finish it out pretty good they don't have to travel too much besides the colorado and then seattle well guess what over the next month every team that they are playing because the new playoff format is in playoff contention again except for the Texas Rangers. Uh, Seattle is only a game or two out from the eighth seed. They've been seven and three the last 10 games. The Giants, uh, I don't know how, have also been seven and three the last two uh, 10 games. We can remember early in the season, the Rockies smoked us. And even though they haven't been the same team <laughs> since then, they're still in playoff contention. So a lot of these teams have something to play for where if you any given day they can go in there and contend they're only a game um, back from the giants for the eighth seed right now 
Yeah, exactly. So there's, don't take things lightly. You got to make sure that you have to play at the level that you know you can't. Because in reality is, look, the only team that's on par with the A's, looking at the rest of the schedule, is the Dodgers. And the Dodgers are the best team in baseball. They should easily beat all these teams. And they just need to remember that they are the better teams going into every one of these series yeah. going up. I like that one. I like it a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it now and again, we'll, we'll preview the coming schedule in, in the, in, you know, a couple minutes, but I mean, shit, you're right. And we got some double headers against the Mariners too. And like, you just got to go in there with, you know, f- pardon my language with just, you know, actually, I'm not going to say that. Um, you just got to go in there with the confidence that like, uh, like there I'm, I'm a you fuck, I'm fucking better than this, than this team. Like, like, what are we even doing here? And you just got to like it kind of goes along with what Tyler said. We got to score, uh, score quickly and score often, score early, score often. And then you don't even worry about it. Then you kind of walk out there with, out of there with the, with the confidence and going, going into the next series. So I dig that one. All right. So my first one is a little bit more specific. Um, they got to foul off more fucking pitches. And it, this drives me fucking crazy this season i don't know what it is if like darren bush has just like told these guys like hey like uh you know maybe just see more pitches but don't necessarily swing and everything anytime there's a pitch close in the zone they just fucking watch even with two strikes when there's two strikes you cannot watch cl- pitches that are close to the zone you just can't and it's not like they're these massive Ugh. breaking balls like these insane curves oh, or these sliders that just the like that fly in like in t- like two feet from out of the zone these are fastballs that are just like right on the outside and you're just watching them at least like try and swing at it i'm not gonna be mad at you for swinging and missing and striking out but if you just watch it i'm gonna lose my fucking mind like this is just what you do in baseball it, when, when you're down the count you have to foul them off you have to get deeper you have to try and find your pitch because I don't know. It just drives me crazy, and they've been doing it a lot lately. And 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 just just start swinging anything close. Just start doing it. And I, Tommy Lestella did this the other night, and I was very upset by it. And I'm like, dude, you're new. You should you should be coming in here and t- like showing these guys something different. I don't know. I don't know. Really trying to. So that actually okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, you know, this again reminds me of softball. It was just always make yeah. the pitcher work. You know, we we should be trying to get seven, eight pitches at least off of each pitcher, um, and and trying to tire them out. And I know big leagues are obviously a little different; these guys are way more practiced and, and tenured. But it shouldn't be easy for them. You know, they should be trying to throw to us. And I'm with you, Chris. When it's when it's two strikes, you're protecting the plate. Your your strike zone gets even wider than it was before. And you should be hitting any or trying to hit anything. And here's the other thing. Here's another like random stat that Kipe and, and Dallas Brandon brought up in the broadcast yesterday. The A's, like this season, their offense is like historically better at hitting the bullpen than they are at hitting the starters, which is like never normally a stat. Normally you're better at hitting starters like the second time through the through the order, and then the bullpen you kinda get shut out. This season it's the complete opposite. Um so if you know that that's your stat, you should be trying to do everything you can to get the starter out of the game. So you should be trying to get as many, ha- make that starter go through as many pitches as you can during your at bat. Like it's just it's it's all it's all full circle. Sorry, go ahead, Julio. And I'm just looking back at their schedule too. Some more food for thought as we keep talking about these starters. <laughs> um, the A's have pretty much faced some pretty trash pitching. In our division. Yeah. Or in the two divisions. The best pitchers they face so far have been arguably Lance Lynn. Uh, Lance Lynn, Dylan Bundy, and Zach Granke, who, you know, don't get me wrong, they've all been have really good years, but what's going to happen when we have to go to Minnesota and, like, Kent is pitching? Or what happens if we advance and fucking Shane Bieber is pitching? Like, and <laughs> that's the problem, too. It's just for some reason, too. <laughs> and this has been something for the last couple of years too. They, whenever they just face like this ace, they just forget how to hit. Yeah. Oh my God. They just fall apart. <laughs> and also another follow-up question too, because you two have played a lot more organized baseball than I did. Mm-hmm. I quit after the second grade. 
<laughs> what do you when you see somebody who's actually doing something like taking more pitches, say like, uh, and is actually getting on and being productive with their outs, even if they're not getting on base, do you seek out and be like, hey, what are you doing, or do you see other teammates that are doing that, and does that actually become an effective trait, really? I mean, I mean, what, 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 if, I, I'll take this one real quick before you. Sorry, Tyler. I just got very excited. Um, my, what when I played, I was the ninth hitter in high school and 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 uh, the end of my Babe Ruth. I was always the ninth hitter because I wasn't that great of an of an accurate hitter. I could bomb the ball, but not very often. Um, like a lot of doubles, and I hit like two seventy in high school, which is. Not good for a high school player. Normally, high school players hit like upper three fifties. It's just hitters are better, pitchers are worse in high school. It's just kind of how it is. Um, so I, you know, I was at the bottom of the lineup, but I had speed, so I hit ninth. I always, always asked the guys in front of me, "What are you seeing?" Like always, like like after the first inning, let's say for some reason, like you know, we go one two three out, and then we go out of the field and we come back. I'll go up to the one, two, three hitter and be like, hey, what, what were you guys seeing out there just so that like, I know when I'm coming up? And, oh, you know, he's throwing a lot of fastballs, he's throwing them out of the zone. Um, his two-seamer uh, moves a little bit, and you could see it, but not to the last minute. So kind of look for that. I'm like, okay, cool. So if I see a two-seamer, then it's going to move. So I'll be prepared to do that. And then, like things like that. Like That's just what a good hitter should be doing in general. I, I, I don't know. What do you, what do, I don't know. How, I guess softball might be. I mean, it's probably the same thing, right? No, no. Yeah, it was exactly the same. I mean, so I, I was usually number two. and <laughs> The opposite? So we're, we're early on, but... Because <laughs> I, I would bunt a lot. Oh, I was yeah. left-handed, so... <laughs> um, but, no, I mean, absolutely. If you're not asking what's being seen, I mean, like, why wouldn't yeah. you? That just seems kind of, kind of a natural thing to do. I mean... Um, and especially from the angle you're at, you're not necessarily seeing the movement and there's a lot more in baseball than there is in softball, but softball is more yeah. kind of up and down movement, but, um, you know, or, you know, it's, it's more, are they going more outside inside towards the end of pitches too? Um, but yeah. And then I think as far as, you know, when, when girls would, maybe they'd strike out or they would ground out or whatever, but if it was after, especially in softball, after seven or eight pitches, I mean, you're not booing at that, certainly, because that's that's a lot of pitches, um, particularly in softball. There's a lot. Of you're doing the t- there. you're doing the rest of the team so. a favor too. If you if you eat if you eat up those pitches, because yeah. then it's like okay, cool, and and mm-hmm. yeah, and other little things like hey, what's hitting the zone? Like oh, his, his two seamer is hitting the zone, so be prepared to swing at that. Oh, he threw me two sliders, and all of them were on the outside. It's just like oh, okay, all right. These are like little things to think about. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely, that's a good point, bringing me up of um, helping your teammates out. And I think if from a mindset perspective, if you're not just kind of one, two, threeing each girl or each guy going down and you're throwing all these pitches and kind of having to bring everything out of your toolkit early, that yeah. gets in your head mm-hmm. a little bit. You've showed them everything. It's like, to what now? Yep. Got all your cards. Um, I love this. This was an awesome cop hearing this. It's like just yeah. This is great. this is the most like actual like down to like the the nitty gritty like baseball talk that we've had. Like oh, uh, uh, it's been a lot of like a uh, a lot of fandom talk uh, since since now. That was actually like it, you know it felt like we were in a dugout. Um, all right, what's your what's your second one, Tyler? Um, another really basic one, but don't leave men on. Um, I, I think on average, the A's are, we're not really bad in the league, but I think we're leaving seven to oh eight on, God. um, each game and we just can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just can't do that. We, we got to bring people around. Um, you know, each, each person in the lineup has a job and if somebody's on base, it's to get, to get them in or to get them moving at least. Um, and so I think that goes with the score earlier, the score off. And I don't think we have an issue so much getting on base, but it's, it's bringing them around to home. So I'm focusing on that for sure. It's kind of hand in hand with what Chris was saying with his last statement of just, just contact because again, productive outs. If, if mm-hmm. you have two, if nobody's out, you have somebody hits a double and then somebody hits a sack fly right. Guess what? You have a runner on third with your first out. So like, 
it, it's just being productive in those times and being aware that like, and that's the huge problem with the team in general. Just like, it seems like the top two hitters, whether it's Ramon or, or Simeon and now La Stella, they're just trying to get on base. But when you get to like three, four, five, it's just, no, it's just, that's, that's yeah, but job, it's, yeah. it's, it seems like they just want to fucking hit bombs with Chapman, Olsen, and Kendall, which is awesome because when they do, it's great, mm-hmm. but it, they got to be a little more productive of what they're going to do, do with those at-bats. Yeah, Swing for the green, maybe not all the stars all the time. Bingo, bingo. Um, I had a very great point, and I totally blanked. <laughs> I'm sorry. Three, four, five? No, no it, it, it doesn't at all. Um, stars? No, it was an add-on to what you were saying, Julio. I just fucking totally... Well, I was looking up research for my point next, and, it, you know, it's a, it was just a classic narcissism move. I just zoned out what you were saying and was thinking about what I w- was going to talk about, and I apologize. Uh, or is that a sociopath move? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I'm not either of those things, though, I swear. I'm used to it, either way. Oh, that's fucking rude. Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, yeah, you, 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 wait, you just said yours, right? Now, now this whole joke got me com- completely <laughs> twisted around. You just said yours, right? Hulu? <laughs> no, I think I that's right. Think uh, okay. Yet. I haven't said mine. That's right. My bad. My bad. Okay. Fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Do you, are you okay? Is everything okay? With no, you? I might be having a stroke. <laughs> Um, live on air. Um, all right, you're up. Go, you go ahead. <laughs> oh boy, this is a good time. <laughs> Starters, <laughs> they look like they're getting hungry for some innings. So Bowmel, you gotta let them eat those innings up, homie. Earlier, t- I felt like that was very Dallas Braden of me to say that. But um, Billy Butler just, just country breakfast just eat him uh, up uh, don't, please don't don't talk about Billy Butler right now God, fuck that guy um, not a former Oakland A's great Julio he, he's still a former Oakland A great but he's just he's just a bad signing and got in a locker room fight but besides the point uh, we starting to see signs of kind of the bullpen losing steam a little bit it's, uh, case in point Petit the other night who's pretty much been one of our lockdown guys gave up uh, two run or two runs the other, uh, I think it was Tuesday night against the Astros and you can tell these guys are getting a little tired because throughout most of the season our starters have been going about tops five innings Manaya has been excuse me when they've been good they've been lasting about five innings and then that's usually their cap bringing the bullpen have them close it out which is not a bad thing because again this this bullpen has the potential to take us to a championship because they're on that level good, but you got to start preserving them. Now you got to let the starters stay in there. Case in point tonight, Jesus mm-hmm. Lazardo was freaking outside. He gave two that. runs and both those were solo home runs. He pitched seven innings mm-hmm. uh, last night. I believe. Oh, uh, Oh my God. Frankie Montes had a fantastic game the other day. He lasted six innings as well. You just got to keep your confidence in those starters and know that they're going to find a way to figure things out. Sean Manaya has been coming back to what we saw him at the end of September. He's actually pitching back to his ability. The one guy that you got to be a little nervous about is still Mike Fires. As long as you're pitching in Oakland, you have to give him the ball, though, because he does benefit as a fly ball pitcher in that huge ballpark. But we just got to be aware of that. Don't be so uh, trigger happy to start Roman Ripper bullpen when you seeing a guy on second and it's the, the fifth yeah. inning. Because the fact is, like, we got to preserve these guys. There's going to be a point where if we're going to be a do or die bullpen game, what happens if Fires blows up and you're no going to bring your bullpen? Who's yeah? There you go. Uh, and what happens if he blows up in a playoff game and? your bullpen's been shot because you threw them out the game before or the days before. So preserving it, be confident with your pitch, with your starters, let them pitch deep. We're starting to see that trend. So hopefully it continues. Yeah. uh, Even my boy, Chris Bassett did uh, in his last start, seven innings, just saying. (coughs) Chris Bassett fan. Is it a Chris thing? Is this back to the narcissism? Yes. 
one thousand percent. You have to root for every Chris. Well, you know, there's some there's some rough Chris's out there, but uh, you know, the good ones. I'm there for you. I just did a chest your pound fa- to a piece for the listeners. Your favorite, your favorite Heat, Chris Bosh. No, no, Dwayne Wade actually, and uh, maybe Goran Dragic now. Uh, but this is not a basketball podcast. Um, favorite Kardashian is Chris Jenner. All right, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Keep going. Uh oh, is that what you're leading up to? A joke. Um, by the way, I remembered what I was gonna say, but it's not important now because we're talking about pitching. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I couldn't agree more, especially like, especially with again, we're gonna preview the schedule in a couple minutes, especially with all the doubleheaders we got coming up. We cannot afford to just over overdo our bullpen. We're gonna need them, especially going into this a playoff series against, like you said, potentially the Twins, potentially the Yankees, potentially. Um, Cleveland in the next round or the White Sox. Like, we're going to need those guys, and we cannot get overworked them right now. Um, and, yeah, they're starting to do it. Fires is the only one who's really not, like, making it, you know, making it work. So, I don't know. His last start was uh, – what was his – oh, his last start was against the Padres. But his start before that was uh, pretty promising, and he ate up, like, f- five innings or something like that. You'd like him to go six or more, but um, it was it was decent. And, and – um, as long as we can get to seven, as long as we can get to uh, me and Julio's now favorite um, um, bullpen guys, uh, uh, Deekman Soria and Hendricks, um, you know we, we we feel we feel confident in that. All right, cool. Um, we'll go on to mine then. Yes. I didn't know if you wanted to add anything, Tyler, but that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, no. I was trying to look up a. Fi- I was looking up a fire stat. No, not not uh, you. We were we yeah, were being narcissistic. Not, not, Chris. <laughs> not you, Julio. You narcissist. I said Tyler, not oh, well, Julio. Uh, <laughs> fires. I think though, he has the fire underneath him of a contract. More, more fires puns. I love it. Well. More fires puns. Okay, so mine is. Um, oh my god. <laughs> This is just kind of how these jokes roll sometimes. Um, mine is uh, you got to put the hot hitters at the top of the lineup. Um, I am I I'm just I'm tired of seeing guys like Ramon Laureano, who's in a massive slump right now. His average is at two thirty three. He had a hit tonight, great, cool, but he struck out and he was just unproductive. Like, why is he hitting third? Why? Like, why why is that happening? Stephen Piscotti is one of our, I know he's hurt, but Stephen P- Piscotti. He's one of our hottest hitters right now. Why isn't he at the top of the order? Sean Murphy, you just said coming off an amazing week, hitting 264 in the past week. Why is he hitting ninth or hitting eighth? Like Mark Canna, who's been our most consistent hitter all year. What he does is he either walks or he gets a hit. He hardly ever strikes out. Why is he hitting sixth? I, I just, I do not get it. Like, I just don't. And like Marcus Simeon's hitting 216. Well, I, I understand these are our stars, and these are the guys we've relied on for the past three years. You know, Simeon, Olsen, Chapman, those have been our guys. They've led us to this point. But it's its not working right now, and it's part of the reason we're le- – like, it, it all all of our things relate to each other, like like our, the, our two things. We're leaving runners on because of the top of our order can't get on fucking base. Um, at the bottom, the order does, but then, you know, let's say we – yeah, let's say we start the inning 8-9. Cool, 8-9 get on base, but then – one, two, and three all strike out, and <laughs> we're we're nowhere. Or they ground out into a double play. It's just like, I don't know. I love Bob Melvin, but there's just so many little things throughout the years that I've just been like, what, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing? If you hit well, like that, you should be rewarded by being put higher up in the order and getting more at bats. Yeah, it's especially I I. I after you like you brought up like hey why not move up Sean Murphy that'd be kind of awesome because he has been kind of touted more as an offensive catcher than he was a defensive catcher coming up so if you put him more in that lineup and higher in that lineup then why not and especially now that we have the security of a leadoff hitter for now knock on wood if you're with me of Tommy Lastella hitting one two pretty much every day for the rest of the season then why that gives you more flexibility yeah. why don't you do that. Sean Murphy was actually also known for his arm, just to be yeah, fair. So it wasn't like completely not known for his defense. Just want to throw that out there. Sorry, go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, I think the MLB in general is really weird about their lineups. Like, 
they're set almost like their their starters are on the field. They don't move them around as much. They're not as flexible as they should be. Maybe in the the lower, the seven, eight, nine, they move that around. But I feel like I don't see a lot of movement in the one, two, three, four. They kind of stick people there and, and don't move them. So I'd agree with you, Chris, is, you know, you should be, if you're hitting, you should be in a better spot. If you're doing, if you're doing the job and doing what you're supposed to be doing at bat, put them up higher. The only, it shouldn't, shouldn't be set. No, it's like, it's like reward. Like, Hey, you did a great job. Here's a piece of candy. You're going to be hitting in the two hole now, like the most productive spot in the lineup. The only manager who really is progressive with their lineup in that sense is Joe Madden. And that's kind of been a shtick for a while. Like you put like Rizzo or, or Bryant lead off into the season. There's one game where you put Pujols lead off just to kind of figure it out. It's like, I understand we're in playoff contention, but that doesn't mean that you should at least figure some stuff out with this lineup. My, 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 th- yeah, we, we have enough games, I think until playoffs. Yeah. But my thing around. is, and Especially with the sixty game bit. season when you like you can't afford it and like these guys have been in season long slumps so far, like so let's just use the high hitters now. Like you're getting paid several million dollars a year to make these decisions. Like, why aren't you making them? Like I don't who gives a shit about tradition? Like, I don't know. It's just it's just frustrating. So anyway, those are the things that we need to do focus you think, on. <laughs> um, do you think think some of the it's now it's becoming more of a public thing yeah do you think some of the struggles with chapman and simeon have had to do with these injuries that have been hampering them for sure is it didn't chapman go like 10 or 10 for 11 he, 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 yeah, he on sh- or hell of strikeouts. Yeah, he struck out like like a ton like five straight at bats he struck out and then Marcus has hasn't his bat hasn't been there too much he's still cracking home runs though man so it's really hard to like so when he when he's going on Sports Center with like you know three with like two home runs a week you know I'm not saying that's actually how it is but you know like two home runs a week you're kind of like oh shit like that's you only see things like that so I don't know I mean yeah I mean I think I think it's definitely the in, the nagging injuries but what's Olson's case because Olson hasn't been injured I don't think he's just never been yeah. a great like average hitter he had a better average than Matt Chapman last year like I think it was like by like thirty points. Well, he was. He didn't play. For, he didn't. Didn't he yeah, come exactly. in later? Oh, that's right. Jerk. Well, all right. Well, all right. Small sample size, but he had just as many home runs. Trying to hate on Olsen. You can't hate on those beautiful <laughs> eyes. <Chris>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's gonna do it for um, time to focus. So A's, if you're listening, do what we said because we know more than you because we are not professional baseball players. So yeah, that was sarcasm. I don't know if you could tell. Um. All right. So let's uh let's preview the coming week, shall we? Let's do it. So tomorrow or today, if you're listening to it the day this comes out, um, we play the Astros for the final game of this random weird five game series. Um, it's a day game tomorrow, twelve forty. Um, and then uh we play a very interesting four game series against the Texas Rangers on the eleventh at five p.m. Um, this is out in Arlington, not Dallas. Remember who will? Um, we have one of two doubleheaders this week on Saturday. First game's at 2.05. Next game we played right after that around 3 o'clock. And then on the 13th, um, 11.35 day game against the Rangers. Monday, the second doubleheader we are talking about. Remember, folks, there's a lot of doubleheaders coming up. Um, we still have... One more, uh, one more, but th- three, t- three total, but one after this week. Yeah, and you said, and who you said that last one, Sluster was talking about how they might, you know, if they have enough, if they're, what's the word I'm looking for? If they hit their magic number by then, they might have not even play the double letter. Yeah, if there's no, it be pointless. Yeah, if if there's no like, if it doesn't affect the rankings or anything, that just. Say an F it. Yeah. Just don't do it. And they would only play one game or they just yeah. yeah, they'd only just play one game. Just the regular game that was already scheduled. Yeah. Okay. Um anyway, the fourteenth, that is a uh, two o'clock for the first pitch or for the first game. And then shortly after that. And then fifteenth and sixteenth against the Rockies. Um five o'clock on the fifteenth. Uh twelve o'clock on the sixteenth. A lot of away games, huh? We're all away, huh? Except for tomorrow. Yeah, and it it's going to be nice because after this series, 
you're not leaving California or this week, you're not leaving California for the rest of the week. You got a pretty nice schedule at the Giants across the Bay, Dodgers. Ooh, maybe I'll just go to we should go crash them at Dodger Stadium, just go wave <laughs> at their buses or something. Oh dude, yeah. we should go up to uh we should go up to Griffith Park. There's a little hill where you can kinda like peek into the stadium. Ooh, maybe cool. that would be cool. But, um, yeah, go get to see Texas one last time. Hopefully, I don't I haven't seen the pitcher layouts yet, but yeah, Texas is Texas. <laughs> they've regressed. They've regressed pretty hard <laughs> after what was a kind of a progressive season last year from the rotation. Yeah. Hey, but don't don't count out That's your good competition. Point. Good point. Um, Eating my words. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, I mean, the Mariners are still in a playoff hunt, so that's going to be an interesting little series with them. So, I mean, and the Rockies, like you like you alluded to earlier in the podcast. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I originally, when I glanced at this, I was like, oh, this is, should be a nice little week to get our confidence back. And then um, when you brought up the whole, like, oh, that's right, the Mariners are in playoff contention. I was like, oh, shit, that's, this, this might be a little bit different. But we've played pretty well against them so far. Um, yeah, there's yeah. they've they've played them well. I mean, we swept it's, them at the beginning of the season. Just, That's right. We only had technically the one. We swept them at the the first the first uh, series of the season. It's just I haven't watched enough Mariner games to know like what's really made them become a playoff contending team. I know Marco Gonzalez has actually yeah. stepped up. Um, Kyle Lewis is like one of the rookie of the year nominees for the AL. But it's like, I don't, I don't know what else they do good. Is it just, is it luck? Is it just the rest of the teams that they're playing, like the yeah. Angels and and? That's what I was gonna say. What's their schedule? Yeah, maybe like? they just got really hot against some bad, pretty bad teams right now. I mean, maybe I, they just traded away their like best pitcher, starting pitcher too. So like. They played the Angels. They played the Padres. This I mean, they have a similar August. schedule to us because they're in our division and they oh. play the NL West because of the situation this year. So, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, all right. Let's pick our essential tailgate tool of the week. Um, again, Tyler, as the guest, you may go first. So, I think I'm doing this right. When I first saw this, Chris, I'm not going to lie. I thought you were talking about, like, a literal tailgate. Tool. I mean, if that's what you got, let's do it. <laughs> so if that's what you got, let's do it. Yeah, I brought, I got a spatula. Um, you can use it for so many things, you know. Maybe you can make it as a toy. Um, I was like, okay, cute. Like it, but okay. Um, no, I'm going to go... So with my player of the week, Chris Davis, I just really, really Mm -hmm. am rooting for him. I want to see him do well. I really hope that he carries these hits that he has. Um, You know, we're talking about the double headers, so we have a lot more chances just in the next week, uh, more than normal, to get at bat if they put him in there in the DH role. But um, I'd really like to see him have a good September and really finish it out strong and go into the playoffs hot. He's he's been our pick a couple times. I think Julio, he was yours two weeks in a row, wasn't he? Something like that. But if anything, um, I know Sean Manaya's kind of been in the same boat. Yeah. And like the third time around, it worked. So like third time's a charm. Yeah. So Tyler, (laughs) Tyler being on the show is like what it's going to get him back into the playing form. There you go. Especially playing against the Rangers. We know how much he loves playing against them. (laughs) Yeah. Put it out. Oh yeah. And in Arlington. (laughs) His home ballpark. He loves to do it, even though he doesn't. It's not the same ballpark, but whatever. All right, Julio, what's yours? Uh, I'm gonna go with our dude out of the pack, Mac. <laughs> Pronounced it right. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, more so, we don't know the seriousness if some of the injuries are gonna be. Well, we know Piscotti is pretty light. He's just got a cortisone shot today. He's gonna be missing a couple games. Uh, Chapman. We don't know how long, but the expectation is he's at least not going to be coming back until at least the Texas series, but we'll see what happens. But I think he's going to be somebody who's going to be a great placeholder or a, a table setter for any time the, the teams are coming up. And we talked about with Tyler's like, don't leave men on base, be productive. And, Ty- and Chris saying like, be productive with contact and make sure you're getting on base or hitting. And there's no better example 
besides maybe um, Tommy Lastella, though, with Mark Canna. The guy is an on-base machine. He just walks, 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 walks. And we're at the point of the season where we're hoping the hitters are kind of figured out, like, he is on to something. Same thing with Tommy Lastella. That they can kind of pick up on it. And on top of that, I think if the other two guys I mentioned with Piscotti and Chapman, their injuries are going to be something that are going to be hampering them and they'll be out of the lineup. He's going to be the person to pick up that burden. And I hope this is the time where he really steps it up to be like the fan favorite and why we love him so much. And he shows it over the next week. I like it. I dig it a lot. Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and this is going to be a good segue into mine because I don't fucking, I don't know who to pick anymore. Um, <laughs> So I was originally going to pick Tommy Lastella because the last time I looked at his batting pick average, him. which I didn't pick, I didn't look at today. I looked at two days ago. It was not good. It was 267. And then you just told me that he's been hitting well. So I looked at his batting average. And he has. He's been hitting 275. So I'm like, fuck, I can't pick Tommy Lastella because everything I was going to say about him would be <laughs> irrelevant now. I was going to say, like, we just got him. He hasn't been hitting well. He needs to get out of his slump. And he needs, and, you know, I was thinking back to the, at bat that I was talking about earlier, like I saw him just watch two strikes that were like right in, in the the edge of the zone and he just watched them go and swing at him. So that picks out the fucking door. Um, my second one was going to be Mark Hanna for all the reasons you just said, because Biscotti's out and he's going to have to play right field and he's going to be, <laughs> we've been doing that a lot. Lately. I know it's so frustrating. Um, and, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> <laughs> For all the things you said, he's going to be a really like important piece in the middle of the lineup. He, This is why we love him so much. He's always been Mr. Reliable for the past – I mean, he's been here as long as Simeon, so like the past five years. He's always just like randomly come out of nowhere and just had these insane streaks and just like – and he did it so well last year and played so well defensively last year that it, it got him a, a starting spot in left field on our team, a regular starting spot instead of being like a role player, which he was the first couple of years. Um, so instead I'm going to pick, just pick La Stella. Well, no, because then, it, <laughs> why would you not? All right, pick I'm going to pick Marcus Simeon because, um, especially if he's going to hit the top of the lineup without Chapman with a slumping Olsen and with no Piscotti to be the hero, we're going to need him to step it up at the top of the lineup batting behind La Stella. So I'm picking Marcus Simeon. No, because it, I, I don't have a reason to pick Listella. He's basically playing well. Just, you know. All right. I think a good reason to pick Listella would have been to see how much of his patience has impacted the rest of the team. Well, then in theory, you should pick the rest of the team to see if the, his patience will like light their bats up. So the essential tailgate tool of the week. My player the to watch is the whole Oakland The essential A's tailgate lineup. tool of the week is everybody but Tommy Lasella to see if Tommy Lasella's patience and his act and his uh, good average hitting is going to rub off on everybody. All right, so that's mine. Mine is that's my essential tailgate tool of the week. I'm changing mine. It's the entire team except for him. Fantastic. You, Great you job. did this. You did this, Julio. This is your fault. <laughs> All right, guys. This is gonna this is gonna do it for this episode of the Town Tailgate Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us, Tyler. Uh, I know it's been a long episode and it's been late, Thanks but we, this was a lot me. of fun. Uh, especially your uh, f- uh, five hottest days. We've been really wanting to hear that. <laughs> I know that was. What yeah, was especially to for. to see <laughs> your taste in men really just rub off on that one. The the rough around the edges, southern <laughs> southern draw, guys. All right. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> That's I see. I didn't know they were all little southern gents. <laughs> yeah. so your number one is like a myself. fucking <laughs> exact lookalike of your fiance. This is so great. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Julio. What time oh, is man. it? That's great. It is time to head into the ballpark. What are you sneaking in this it's time week? Time to go. Um. Well, it's great because. Tyler's actually got like a pretty big jacket, so we're gonna sneak in a couple tall cans in there. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna bring for the people, so I'm gonna bring in some claws on myself, and then we'll bring in a couple Lagunitas in her jacket and make sure nobody. So, knows. funny thing about random fact before we end this, Tyler 
McAvenna, um, this might incriminate her, but whatever, is a expert at sneaking in booze into stadiums after tailgates. So she would be the one we should take advice from the most. You and your dad. You and your dad are very good at this. Oh, we have brought in our fair share of fireballs, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's pack up the gear. Let's head in. The game is starting. Thank you for listening, everybody, and we will see you next week. Peace. Let's go, Oakland. The Town Tailgate is an independently produced podcast. It is written and executive produced by this guy, Chris Madrigal, (laughs) and my partner in crime, Julio Reynoso. It is sound mixed and edited by yours truly. Social media management and marketing is run by, once again, my partner, Julio Reynoso. And a special thanks and shout out to my brother, Larry Madrigal, for composing and producing our theme song, as well as graphic designing our album cover and artwork. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. Please tune in next week. Please subscribe. And last but not least, as we always say, let's go Oakland.